this lesson, we're going to be looking at balancing equations, advanced level. These are like the A mark style balancing equations. And these examples tend to be the most difficult and usually have oxygen present in either both reactants and or both products. And it's the balance in the oxygen which is the most difficult part. Hence why we always remember step number one, which is our ho, ho, ho. We do all other elements, then hydrogen and oxygen last. And that is the reason why I get you to do the oxygen last, because that is the most challenging element to have to balance. We are going to use the same method that we've used in lesson seven and lesson six. We're going to be using the box method. If we only have one oxygen present in a reactant and we have oxygen present in both products containing oxygen, we will have to balance our reactant oxygen by a half. So I'm going to go through a couple of examples of where we have to do that. If you have oxygen present in both reactants and both products, you'll have to do a little takeaway on both sides of the equation. So this first worked example is an example of having to multiply by a half. We have got ethane, which has the formula C2H6, reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Our first step is to put boxes around the entities which are given. And we then have to make sure that we write our shopping list. We need to remember, ho, 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 all other elements, then hydrogen and oxygen last. So we have carbon, which has the chemical symbol C, hydrogen, which is H, and oxygen, which is O. We mimic that on the other side. What we can see is that we have two carbons on the left-hand side. We have got a total of six hydrogens and we have got two oxygens. On the product side we have got one carbon atom, we have two hydrogen atoms and we have got two oxygens present inside the box of our carbon dioxide. We've got one inside our water, two plus one equals three. So we've got a total of three oxygens. We start at the top of our shopping list. How many carbons do we have on the left? We have two. How many do we have on the right? We have one. Those don't balance. What do we do to one to get to two? We multiply by two. So we put a big two in front of the CO2. How many carbons do we have inside the box? We've got one. One times two is two. How many oxygens do I have inside the box? I have two multiplied by the number outside the box, which is two. Two times two is four. At this stage, I'm going to put a box with my oxygen above the carbon dioxide, letting me know that I've got a total of four oxygen atoms. My carbons balance, so I can tick them off. How many hydrogens do I have on the left? I have six. How many do I have on the right? I have two. What do I do to two to get to six? I multiply by three. So I put a big three in front of the H2O. Two hydrogens inside the box multiplied by three gives six. One oxygen atom inside the box multiplied by three gives three. So I put a three in a box above the H2O. My hydrogens balance so I can tick them off. What we have to do is we have to count the number of oxygen atoms that I have on my product side. So I have got four present in my carbon dioxide and I've got three present in my water. Four plus three equals seven. This is the tricky bit where we have to balance the oxygens. How many oxygens do I have on the left? I have two. How many do I have on the right? I have seven those don't balance. What do I do to two to get to seven? I multiply by 3.5 or three and a half. So I put 3.5 in front of the oxygen molecule. 3.5 times two equals seven. 
they balance so we can tick them off. This is an example where we have to take away from both sides. How can you identify that from looking at the balanced equation? You can see that there is oxygen present in both of the reactants and both of the products. So we're going to follow the first same steps. What we have here is we have got C2H6O, which is ethanol, reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. The first step, we want to put boxes around each of the entities. Remember, when we're writing our shopping list, we have to remember ho, ho, ho. All other elements, then hydrogen and oxygen last. So we have carbon, which is represented by C, hydrogen, which is H, and oxygen, which is O. We mimic that on the other side. How many carbons do we have on the left? We have two. Hydrogens, we have six. And oxygens, we've got one in our first box and we've got two in our second box. One plus two equals three. So we've got three oxygen atoms on the left. On the right hand side, we have got one carbon atom, two hydrogen atoms, and we've got two in our carbon dioxide plus one in our water, which is three. There's a wee trick here that if you have carbon dioxide and water produced, the numbers will always go one, two, three. So let's start at the top of our shopping list and see if they balance. How many carbons do we have on the left? We have two. How many do we have on the right? One. They don't balance. What do I do to one to get to two? I multiply by two. So I put a big two in front of the carbon dioxide. I've got one carbon inside the box multiplied by two outside the box. One times two is two. How many oxygens do I have inside the box? I've got two. Two times two is four. I'm going to put that above the carbon dioxide because I'm going to add them up last. My carbons balance so I can tick them off. How many hydrogens do I have on the left? I have six. How many do I have on the right? I have two. Those don't balance. What do I do to two to get to six? I multiply by three. So I put a big three in front of the water. Two hydrogens inside the box multiplied by three outside the box gives six. How many oxygens do I have inside the box? I have one. One times three is three. Again, I'm going to put the oxygens above the formula. My hydrogens balance so I can tick them off. I need to add up the total number of oxygens that I have on my product side. Four plus three equals seven. Now, it's at this stage where it gets a little bit tricky. Because I've balanced all of the elements in my reactant, which was my ethanol, I don't want to put any numbers in front of that. However, I do have an oxygen present in that formula. So I'm going to put a blue box around that. How many oxygen atoms do I have in that formula? I have one. I need to account for that. So what I want to do at this stage is I want to take away one from the total number of oxygen atoms that I have on the left. What you do to one side, you do to the other. So if I have, I had three, three minus one equals two. On the product side, I had seven. Seven minus one equals six. This is the last step that we need to balance. On the left hand side, how many oxygen atoms do I have? I have two. On the right, I have six. Those don't balance. What do I do to two to get to six? I multiply by three. So I put a big three in front of the O2. Two oxygens found inside multiplied by the three outside gives a total of six. My double check here is to make sure that the total number of oxygens balance on either side. What we can see is in the box above the ethanol, I have one, and the box above the oxygen, I have six. One plus six equals seven. On the product side, I've got four plus three, which equals seven. Here are three examples of balancing equations that you can have a go at. 
Remember, if we only have oxygen present in one reactant, you are multiplying by a half. And if you have an oxygen present in both reactants, you have to do a takeaway on either side of the equation. So if you want to have a go at this, you can pause the video and when you're ready, you can resume and double check your answers. Questions from the National 5 2014 multiple choice 4. We're given an equation and we are asked to balance this equation. First step is we have to put boxes around each of our entities and then we have to write our shopping list. Remember, Santa says ho ho ho, so we need to do all other elements, then hydrogen and oxygen last. So we've got iron, which has the symbol Fe, carbon, which has the symbol C and oxygen, which has the chemical symbol O. We mimic that on the other side. How many irons do we have? We have got two on the left. How many carbons do we have? We have one. And the total number of oxygens that we have, well, we've got three found in our first box, one in the second box, three plus one equals four. On the right hand side of the equation, how many irons do we have? We have one. How many carbons do we have? Well, they've already got a three in front of the carbon dioxide. So we've got one inside the box multiplied by the three outside the box, which gives us a total of three carbons. How many oxygens do we have inside the box? We've got two. Two times three equals six. So we start at the top of our shopping list. How many irons do we have on the left? We've got two. How many do we have on the right? We have one. What do we do to one to get to two? We multiply by two. So we put a big two in front of the iron. Two times one is two. The irons balance, so we can tick them off. How many carbons do we have on the left? We have one. How many do we have on the right? We have three. What do I do to one to get to three? I multiply by three. So I put a big three in front of the CO. How many carbons do I have inside the box? I have one. One times three is three. How many oxygens do I have inside the box? I have one. One times three is three. So I'm going to put the oxygens at the top to tell me how many I've got present in my carbon monoxide. We can see that we also have oxygen present in our iron oxide. How many do we have inside that box? We have three. Three plus three equals six. Our carbons balance, so we can tick them off. How many oxygens do we have on the left? We have six. How many do we have on the right? We have six. Those balance. So this equation will be balanced when x is three and y is two. Multiple choice answer C.